Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today John and I have the pleasure of speaking once again with Michelle Fabrica, our love and relationship coach. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Art. Hi, John. Hi, Michelle. Good to see you again. I, uh, I need a little advice. <laughs> I tend to, uh, things go from somewhere in the back of my head, straight out my mouth. They don't go through <laughs> my brain. I, <laughs> I don't always process what I should say versus what I want to say. Oh, so John, Sometimes you're, you're aware of that. Out and I'm, you know, afterwards I said to my, you know, I, it doesn't, it causes problems. So afterwards I say to myself, why didn't I just put that a different way? You know, mm -hmm. take the time to just maybe say it a little more nicely. So what is, what, what, what do I need to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I love this topic. So first of all, I'm glad we're focusing on it because I think there's just there's something to be said for just showing some restraint, right? And um, I want to start with a quote that I thought was really interesting and maybe this will kind of get the ball rolling. So uh, somebody named Craig Ferguson, you know, ask yourself the three things you must always ask yourself before you say anything. Does this need to be said? Does this need to be said by me? And does this need to be said by me now? Oh boy, great, mm. great. I would answer no to most of those <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, but John, John, <laughs> in an unrestrained way, yeah. all those things that you're telling me that you can't control yourself, when you say art, you like the best part I've ever had, or you did that so well. I mean, those are, don't don't restrain yourself from doing those because I know they they come from your heart, even if they don't pass directly through your brain. <laughs> yeah so i mean it's you know it's hard to obviously remember to do that kind of thing you know there were those posters that when my kids were in preschool you know that acronym think there's another one right is it true is it helpful mm. is it inspiring yeah is it necessary and is it kind right so think you know that's the other kind of you know, mnemonic around that. But I, I think it's just one of those things we humans have to learn, you know, how to manage our impulses. And, you know, we learn the hard way what happens when we don't. And I just think that, you know, silence and pauses are just underrated in conversation. Well, I think it's always been a, it's always been a, a problem uh, uh, throughout uh, history. Uh, going back to, I remember growing up, we, we used to see the signs, loose lips, sink ships, from the World War II area. <laughs> right. I was young at the time, but I remember yeah. that. Uh, and so you shouldn't say anything. But I think what has exacerbated the, the problem, and uh, I wouldn't beat yourself up about this, John, is that we're, we're the social media uh, uh, generation, uh, or we are pieces of it, and we're affected by it. And what people do is they don't even spend time to think about something face-to-face. -face. They just blurt it out on the internet. So not only did they insult somebody they probably shouldn't have if they had thought about it, but they insult them in front of 9,000 strangers and Publicly. friends. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't yeah, have anybody I mean, I in front of you to even make you think about stopping it because you're just talking to a computer. Yeah. Right, right. You're not really getting the impact of how this is going to land out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we can pay attention to is just what like tuning into our bodies really and you know there's a lot of information in here like if we're um you know what's our breathing like and our, you know what's our heart rate doing do we feel any tension because oftentimes we can notice if we're getting amped up we can notice if something is going on that we're about to maybe say or do something we're going to regret and so i think that kind of cultivating that kind of um connection to like oh wow just so want to say this sentence or I so want to type this or something. And um, it's just, it's, it doesn't help us. Right. But to notice that in, you know, rising tension is something that can help us, you know, get a, get a handle on ourselves. Right. That's, that's good advice. I'm very practical um, to be a little bit more self-aware um, to help create that pause that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I think also, like, sometimes it's about deciding in advance, you know, what topics you're going to like, you know, maybe when your son comes to visit, I'm just making something up, you know, 
don't ask him when he's going to get a new job that he, you know, that if he hates his job, you don't need to go into that. Or if your daughter shows up, don't ask her about how her, you know, boyfriend is that you don't like, or, you know, that yeah. how's her, has she gained weight or, you know, whatever. Just like, can you just in advance prep yourself for certain things that are just not going to go well? Okay. And, um, instead pour on some little extra love and support when you see them. I'm like, just kind of like coach yourself in advance. Like I'm going to not go here with this person. And, yeah. um, and yeah. And then the final thing I like to talk about is that to really celebrate those moments of restraint. This is one of my favorite. I really, I do this regularly. I have to say, it's just, you know, it's kind of, I, you guys say, see me, you know, make the muscle or something. It's just like when you've not said something to someone, it's like, ugh, I didn't do that. I didn't say that extra thing. <laughs> and it, I mean, seriously, it's like, you know, write it in a journal or tell someone who's like, you know, can be your number one fan about it. And it's really yeah. about, you lock in this like ninja feeling of like pause and silence and stillness. It's just, I don't know, I, I'm, a re I'm a big fan of that because it, like even just something small, like, you know, I went to that party, I didn't have that second or third, you know, glass of wine or something. Hey, I didn't do that. I wanted to, but I didn't. It's like practicing that impulse control and celebrating yeah. when you're able to do it. I, um, I think that's a that's a really important point because we do need to reward the good things in our lives. Exactly. Even if, even if we're doing them, and even if it's a negative, even if it's something I didn't do, but it was good. It was a good thing. Yeah. I yeah. Should, I should celebrate it. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. Reward it by going out and have that third glass of wine. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. But I think you know it's hard because I think in our culture, you know, you look at movies and so many of the plot lines are about you know reactivity and impulsive behavior. You know, it's like violence or cheating or whatever, and it's like yeah. we're tantalized by it. It's exciting, and, and I think our our culture glorifies you know action. Right? It's like there's almost shame or judgment if you're going to let that person get away with that. You know, you're going to you know, just not react to what they, you, they just, you know, did, did or said something, you're not going to do anything about that, you know? So there's like judgment about not like, you know, immediately responding. And I just think, you know what, that just creates wreckage. I mean, we know that, right? We, you mm -hmm. know, so I think um, there are other ways to have excite more excitement in your life, you know, uh, explore your sexuality, you know, in some new way or try something different. Well, sexually or otherwise, try some new activity or meet new people, take on a new challenge. Like there's a lot of ways to kind of get that, you know, aliveness without, um, and creating connection at the same time, right? So without adding to the unnecessary drama that is already in, in the world enough, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I would say that anybody, anybody who wants to uh, prep for this, because it could be difficult, is uh, let's sit down for a day and watch uh, The Love and Romance there are, Hallmark has three channels. One of the during the day is only love and romance. If you watch Hallmark movies, okay, uh, they always get down to the signature kiss at the end, which is almost, <laughs> almost a real kiss. But you know, they did it for Hallmark because they they don't like to exchange spit or whatever it is that they have in their in their uh, background. But they always wind up where uh, somebody can apologize for having thought something or said something they shouldn't have. And it always, it always turns out well. I haven't seen a bad homework ending, so maybe maybe that would be a good series of training films. Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't realize that that, that was one of, that was your jam watching these movies. Well, you know <laughs> what? Uh, during the last two years, uh, uh, we we happened to get on our service all three homework channels. The one we like most is Murders and Mysteries, uh, uh, okay. which uh, has I... uh, Murder She Wrote at Night, but during the day they have some really good ones, and those are not the ones I'm suggesting. But then there's the romance, like there's Christmas in July. The whole month of July, they have Christmas movies. And you know what? Oh, well. The nice thing about it is you don't have to sit for the whole movie. You come in in the middle, you get the gist <laughs> of it, and you know within 30 minutes, 30 to 45 you know minutes, ends. they're going to get a happy, happy ending where maybe they had restraint. Uh, they never, somebody has a breakup, but it's not, it's not the protagonist that you want to get together. So, Anyway, yeah, no, actually, I enjoy oh. the, the homework movies. It's nice oh, yeah, not yeah, watching yeah. Murder and Mayhem or or Nightly <laughs> News. Art, I, I don't mean to be rude, but you've just insulted Michelle. 
We don't need a, a love and relationship. Coach. Not if you watch the Hallmark watch Channel. Just Hallmark movies. <laughs> Absolutely. The show well, agree mean, with that. It is, there is something to be said about seeing, you know, when things go well, right? I mean, I think that's kind of what we're doing here with these videos is just, you know, what can you do to have things go well as opposed to, you know, you see movies and crazy, you know, stories happening. And it's just like, let's let's look at the other side, right? And, and you know, even if you do, like, say something you wish you hadn't said, it's never too late to apologize, right? We've, we've talked about that in other videos, too. So, you know, making that mistake in that moment you can always make amends. Okay, right? so we, we now have a new subtitle, which is uh, if you want to have have a Hallmark moment, a Hallmark life, see Michelle Fabrica. She'll she'll help get you there. And if you screwed it up, <laughs> and if you and if you had the the murder mystery version of it on an earlier uh, relationship, she'll help you get over it and have a more mm -hmm. successful next one. Michelle, you were <laughs> terrific. It's it's wonderful how you can break these things down to like all is not lost and there are different ways of looking at it. And uh, and uh, you could be taken care of, if not for this relationship, but the next one. So thank you well, very I, much. I, I particularly appreciate your practical approach to these issues because they're very, almost all of them are emotional. Mm. And you bring us back down to things we can actually do and how we can work uh, with our emotions to be better. So I thank you. And this was great advice yeah. again. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.